Happy Monday, everybody. It is me, Pacific, and hello. Today, we're going to put the boot in on women. <laughs> it's time. Last night, <clears throat> let, let me tell you what happened. So I responded to a post of a woman looking for somebody to be a friend or go to lunch. I thought, okay, that seems innocuous, seemed like an attractive picture, responded to it. More and more, I'm just looking now in the platonic section. It's like, you know what? Forget trying to find a romance. Let's see if you can find somebody to be a friend with that might work up into an interest. 55-year-old woman, <clears throat> veterinarian, obviously into animals, but I didn't think anything of it. I sent her an email. She sends an email at the end of the day, says... It's going to be 100 Wednesday, 100 degrees Wednesday and Thursday. Pretty nice out. Got back from the store. So you like to climb. She saw one of my pictures of me behind a boulder on Lantau. And I said, ah, climbing in the sense of hiking, yes, but rock climbing, no. And I said, if you want to do anything tonight, let me know. <clears throat> well, I didn't know where she lived. She lives a considerable distance from the metro area. And I thought, oh, that ain't going to work. So then, I didn't hear anything back, and then Sunday morning, yesterday morning, I woke up and there was a email, a brief, saying I could probably do something after one Sunday, and I said, okay, that's cool, and uh, she didn't get a hold of me till near 6 o'clock last night with a text message, because I gave her my number, and she said, I'm so sorry, the day's been a complete mess. I said, do you want me to call you? Well, why don't you call me after 8.30? I'm in the middle of something. But while she was doing that, she was texting me. <clears throat> I didn't ask any questions. She said, yeah, my car engine blew up, and I have to ride the bus. And I got a little traffic ticket that I didn't pay, so my license has been suspended. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Problem, 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 problem. And I just texted back, oh, that sucks, that stings. Then she finally at 8 says, can you talk? I called her, we talked. And the minute I heard her voice, just the sound of her voice was a definite no. And she says, I've got horses out in the country that I can't see, and I can't leave the house because i got this dog I can't leave alone, and my 21-year-old son lives with me, and I'm just thinking, oh, man. <laughs> Like my pastor said, we live in a broken world with broken people making broken choices. Yeah? And I thought, wow. We've got already, right out of the gate. And then she tells me where she lives. And I said, well, i got to be honest with you, that's too far. I said, you know... <clears throat> I said, I commute far enough from my job, but I said, you know, it'd be difficult to see you, and I just sloughed it off that way. But, yeah, then out comes the story of boyfriends that pushed her down the stairs, boyfriends that all he wanted was sex, boyfriends this, and, and I thought, do you see a pattern here? And last night, the lady of the house asked me, what happened to that pretty nice black girl you were dating? I said, I don't know. She just went away. And I told her how she had talked bad about her mother. And I said, her mother seems to be pretty straight up. But I said, I, it finally dawned on me that she just likes to use people for outings and to get out of the house and likes to flirt and come on to people. But that's it. And, and it was funny. She kept telling me, as she mentioned, we were talking about the Hispanic dynamic. And she goes, you know, that's funny. The Hispanic women I know in my Christian women's club, they're very nice. They're not like that. And I said, you know what, though? You don't know that. And we started talking about women, and she admitted to me that I had said to her that I didn't care for her granddaughter. And I said, you know, that's in confidence. And she asked why. I said, she's stuck up. She's conceited. She never talks to me. She won't even look at me and greet me when she comes in. I said, I'm not comfortable around her. She told me yesterday that she told her that, and I said, you went and told her that? I said, why? Well, I just went up and said, Mike, Mike doesn't feel comfortable around you. And all she responded with was, oh, really? I didn't know that. 
I said, did she say anything else? And she goes, no. She goes, where she's really shy. I said, her own mother said that she can be very stuck up. She goes, I think you got to get to know her. I said, I've known her for what? 15 years, you know, between me renting next door and being invited to family functions. And I mentioned other granddaughters that have been very kind to me. And I said, you know, I said, I hate to tell you this, but I said, in this country, I said, you run with a different circle. You're with mostly older women. And I said, you aren't going to see those things because of the circle you run in. She goes, well, I know a lot of people. I'm in my 80s. I said, I understand that. But I said, women treat women different than they do men. I said, they'll be all nice to you. And out of the same kindness that they're showing you, they put up this body language barrier. And we were talking about that dynamic. And <clears throat> oh, stupid alarm. And I told her, you know, I said, it's not the same anymore. I said, women are about money. Women are about using men. I said, you've even got heavy women now that they won't even look at me because they think they're all that on a stick. And it's funny. <clears throat> Yesterday before church, I walked around the lake, did 2.4 miles. And I noticed one girl who was walking her dog kept looking at me and she looked in a non-hostile way. And I went around the lake again and saw her. She looked, I looked, and she smiled at me. I thought, well, there's a first. Every other woman walking with dogs, baby talk their dogs, talk to their dogs, focus on their dogs. <clears throat> They're all the way over to the other side of the path. And as soon as they see me coming and I'm hugging the right side of the path, I'm on the edge of the cement. So I'm four feet away from them. And the woman will stop, hold her dogs and stand there rigid as ever. And as soon as I get right even with her, then she'll proceed and it's funny, I'll, I'll watch women try to control their dog and they, they get annoyed and they're trying to have great control and they're getting frustrated. And I know some people make a deal that I make too much about this, but I told my viewers, generally speaking, women with dogs bother me because we live in a culture. I was talking to a Christian brother just this week. I said, we live in a culture where all that traffic will slam on the brakes for dog running loose in the street. All four lanes will come to a dead standstill. But I said, the minute I or a human being walks across there, they will not slow down. They will not yield. They get within this far of you with their mirrors. And I said, there's something wrong with any country that condones abortion, calls it choice, tries to use a nice term for it. But, you know, if you get caught abusing an animal, you can go to jail. No kidding. You whack a dog or whack a cat or do something, you can go straight to jail for that. And I thought, boy, that's messed up. And there's no repercussion for murdering the child within your own womb. When we have that as a backdrop of our female feminist culture, not much good can emanate from that. Pacific has its problems. There's no doubt about it. Pacific has had his insecurity. Pacific has not always scored points by the way he's come across, whatever. But I've always tried to be nice. I've always tried to be a man of heart and a man of passion. And I've noticed that a lot of women don't have that today. They're mired deep into drama and problems, mostly of their own making. Here's a woman instead of getting rid of the dog, instead of selling off the horses that she can't get to, and then the people she stores them with aren't properly feeding them, and then she's worrying. And but why do women encumber themselves with so many things hanging off their life, and they won't let go of them? She also told me she has to move in a couple of days, and she's so sick of moving and wants a house. And the first thing I thought is, this woman needs a provider, and I ain't going to be the one. She goes, my son and I are real close. And I'm thinking, yeah, date her, you got him. 21. Yeah. I was explaining to the woman of the house about the mentality of the uppy women, that they're not even interested in love anymore. It's all about how much you make and money and security. 
what you drive, what you wear, how many college degrees. Has anybody noticed in our country today that the so-called educated people, they're not any nicer? Because she said that. She goes, well, it depends on their income level and their education. I said, no, it doesn't. I said, I met blue collar guys that haven't gone to college and women that are nice. I said, women and people that go to college get egotistical because they think they're better than everybody else because they got a paper degree. And I want to make a qualifier that not all feel this way. And for my detractors that like to say that Pacific always talks about American women, I pound on that a lot. You know, Rush Limbaugh is always blasting the liberals. I pound on American women. And, and, and I will tell you that when somebody was accusing me of being a faggot, I had to laugh. Usually those that are making the loudest accusations on that are probably guilty of that themselves. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to feel that or figure that out. People have gotten back to me on the stuff that this individual has posted on his site, including gay videos and stuff. And you have to wonder that when somebody goes so low to attack me and I haven't seen it, this guy is not going to get my attention on his site. Several of my fans have looked at it. And when we talk about countries and we talk about stuff that's going on in the world, Sweden is one of the most liberal countries in the world. I had a woman write me a couple of years ago on my channel from Sweden who quit her job to stay at home to raise her children. And she was mocked and laughed at by her female coworkers, said how stupid that was. She was attacked for her Christian beliefs. Let me say something that these liberal nations that are anti-God, they are not enlightened. They're oppressive. And if you're a Christian and you have conservative viewpoints, you're not going to fit in there. So when you have a country that allows the kind of sites that some horrible specimens of humanity are getting on to make a site that looks like Wikipedia, putting a profile together just, ver just maliciously, slanderously, defamatory attacking, you, you have to wonder what is wrong with people today. Evil is on the throne. Evil is clearly on the throne. Yes, God is on the throne. But people are showing their hatred. I was thinking of the word fixation yesterday. And all of us tend to get out of balance that way. We get fixated. I've done that. I remember when I was all into antiques and I was obsessed with the Titanic. And you can be obsessed with girls or girl or a truck or a car. I remember when I lived in Prescott and I was into my Dodge pickup. And so was everybody else. They were into their truck. They were into their muscle cars. And that's all they talked about. And I used to hang with that crowd and one day I was just standing around a bunch of guys that were not into God, not interested in God. And they were talking tough and thinking they were all dad on a stick and talking about their, you know, 302 and their GTO and this and that. And I thought, you know, there's nothing else to talk about. How much can you talk about a doggone car? And I found myself pulling away going, this is empty. And I've been down a lot of roads where I determined that that's empty. Filling your house full of stuff, empty. Getting caught up in your remodel and trying to outdo the neighbors, empty. And I see so many people living such utterly shallow lives and thinking that that is the sum total of our existence. But I want to talk about fixation for a moment. The Pacific is learning through this whole dynamic that I'm not a psychologist. I don't have degrees in that. But if, if you allow something like a channel like this to be a teacher of my own mistakes, of watching other people, watching humanity, it's very eye-opening to watch the way people are behaving. When the one whose moniker has a Christian virtue in it, and you see the hate and the strife that he's stirring up. And you see the anger coming out of him. The vitriolic attacks towards people that didn't befriend him. Suddenly a picture becomes clear. That I and others aren't bowing to him. 
that in his own mind he thinks that he is somebody who's some sort of a self-appointed guru and he's not getting the attention he thinks he deserves. And you start looking at people and the way they're acting just on YouTube and you put a picture together. While they're quick to say that Pacific didn't have a good family upbringing, which has already been admitted over ad ad nauseum, you start looking at the way they're acting and go, boy, they must have had a worse family than I did. On the one end of the spectrum, we have a Christian zealot who has crossed so many biblical lines and dragged undiscerning people along with him, which has also been telling about the state of what I've talked about, about American women. They will always focus on the lust. They will always focus on the porn. They will always focus on a man's sexual infidelity while ignoring gross atrocities that are far worse than that. Defamation of character, lying, attacking other people on my site that have done him no wrong. It's funny. You could stand back and go, in the middle of your anger and and how many people have been driving and somebody cuts you off with no turn signal you honk at them they flip you off you get mad and you speed up go over the speed limit and you cut back in front of him with no turn signal to make a point it's like okay you just broke the law now and i've seen christians do that in their anger because i won't worship this guy and won't submit to his frayed uh theological psychosis watch him spin and spin and spin when you look at the other end of the spectrum with rank unbelievers with complete perversion complete darkness a complete fixation to make me run it's disturbing and a picture emerges, these people are unemployed, these people have no life, these people are fixated on one thing. They can't produce anything of any value or merit. They can't do anything to change the world. So let's attack Pacific and go on and on and on. And I do have to mention that. What causes a person to be fixated? Well, as I said in my video, those are the makings of a psycho. Those are the makings of somebody who will cross the edge, cross the line, and if they don't get control of their anger, may do something where they snap. There's six point whatever billion people in the world. There's all kinds of interests and hobbies. And Pacific is guilty of working a lot. And I have tried to have a social life in Denver, and it's not through fault of my own that that has not materialized. It isn't. I have tried to be outgoing. I've tried to be kind. And I see men in this country, and you, and you see it on this channel. Too many men are full of testosterone. And most, most, I was reflecting yesterday on a veiled threat made towards me by somebody who's causing a lot of strife on the channel. And I thought, wow. That I've grown up my whole way, that every guy I've come into contact with that has something against me, has mocked me, has always thought they could take me, always win the war. And I thought, what is it about guys that they all think they can win the fight? I don't know. And Pacific has more and more said, why would I want to be friends with males? They're idiots. I watch the way they drive with one hand draped over the steering wheel. It's like, oh, yes, let's posture. Got the peacock thing out. I'm a big man because I got in debt for this pickup SUV. Really, people actually get an inflated ego because they got in debt and bought a car and they think that they've arrived. It's like, dummy, GM produced millions of those same exact things. Big deal. People base their identity on the strangest things. They base their identity on their truck. They base their identity on their degree, their house. And at the end of the day, I still come away with the same conclusion. You're still rude. You're still a dirt ball and big deal.
This has been an interesting thing in the last couple of weeks. I've seen who the real fans are. I've seen the people that have aligned themselves with one side. And it, and it wasn't me trying to make sides. I have promoted certain people and their views. I've, I've encouraged my viewers, go give this person's channel some, some views because this person has good stuff, etc. So I am a democratic kind of a guy. But Pacific also knows that when you watch what goes on and you see some of these attacks and you go, okay, everybody's focusing on the lust again. But meanwhile, there's other atrocities and sins being committed. And those same people that are keying in on me with pictures are not keying in on those people and all this other stuff. They're doing. In fact, they're totally silent. And it confirms to me over and over again that the impetus in our culture is always the man who did the wrong thing in regards to lust. Never mind that veiled threats are made. Never mind that there's vitriolic attack towards some of my female viewers. Never mind that this person is still going and spinning and showing hatred and using venomous comments against Schultz and others. Not one of those Christian women has come and addressed Mr. FP for any of that. That paints a picture. And that tells me, boy, whatever endorsement I gave this or that person, whatever feelings I had towards this and that person, they're suddenly gone. It's like, how can I respect that? The Christians tend to get on a bandwagonism and jump on something they don't like while ignoring all these other things. And Pacific's belief is if you're going to agree with somebody on one point, you might want to go after them and start talking about the other things they're doing and say, you know what, I've been watching this and you're being downright nasty, ugly, bad. And they won't. And though I was quick to endorse somebody, everybody is different. And I respect that. And I'll say it again, one of the reasons my channel is a magnet for troubles because I stick my finger right in the eye of this culture and say that's wrong. And I say it about myself, so it's not like I'm being self-righteous or holier than now. But women in this country tend to be politically correct, even Christians, and they tend to be very careful not to offend somebody. That is their prevailing philosophy more than anything else. And they'll use a thousand Bible verses to justify it. Well, I'm not supposed to be. I'm not telling you to be obnoxious. But I call it sugarcoating. Of course, nobody's going to attack you. Of course, you know, you're not going to be a lightning rod for that. When I moved to Duluth in 1989, that was when I first started becoming aware of the fact as my closest friend years ago told me, you're a lightning rod. And I said, well, thanks. Is that a good... No, no, it's a good thing. And I said, I don't think it's a good thing. If I were to sit down and tell you line by line, tit for tat, all the things that have happened over the years that just defy any sense. Walking down the 16th Street Mall in the 1990s, they'd open up a cheesecake factory outlet. And I was walking to church. The then wife wasn't feeling well, and I walked several miles. My Bible under my arm like this, walking, walking at a good clip. Guy comes out in the white shirt, clearing the courtyard tables, getting the days ready, days events for Cheesecake Factory ready. He takes one look at me, he says, oh, off to church to learn more bull SHIT. I mean, I'm not even thinking, oh, here's somebody who's going to be hostile to Christianity. Number one. Number two, I'm like, did a guy from a freaking business just say that to me? A, 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 a business that I could be a potential customer and he just shot that out of his mouth at me? I mean, my mind is just like, <sighs> turn around. I said, actually, the truth. And he says, whatever. I wasn't as bold then. And I wish I'd have turned around and said, where's your manager? Let me, let me talk to him. Do you just randomly yell at people in the street that are minding their own business and make an attack on their faith? What kind of a human being are you? Do you know what people have told me? 
just in the last week. In fact, it was said by the guy maintaining the garden this week, and he said, have you noticed that every time there's something going down that the church is strangely silent? Christians have been bullied into a corner, and they're, they're so afraid of losing their white picket fence American conservative dream. I'm telling you, I've been around them. I have watched most American Christians just huddle around their Fox News and their TV set and panic about what is going on. And I'm out there engaging the culture. And yeah, sometimes I compromise and sometimes I get stained and vexed with the filthy conversation of this world. And I'm in it. And there was a time when I wanted to pull away and be a monastic, monkish kind of a guy and just pull out and say, wow, maybe that would make me more pure. It doesn't. Read the monks' own confessions and journals and diaries of where they tried to monasticize and get out there. And they still struggled with lust and still struggled with these things because they said it's in here. You know, we always think it's outside influences. It's like I said, the Internet's not evil. An automobile and a gun is not evil. Eating with unwashed hands is not what makes you unclean. Jesus was very clear about that. It's what comes out of the heart that's the uncleanness. You know, you eat with unclean hands, you get your tongue dirty, but it's out of this. It's out of this that the impurity comes. And and honestly, if, if we want to get real technical about our Christian life, is it honestly that I've come to a point in my life where a lot of dross has showed up. And it shocks even me. It's like, and it's been going on for several years. It's like, wow. And I've heard Christians say you shouldn't be on the internet. It's bad. No, the internet just reveals what's in us and pulls it right out. That comment by that guy, one in a business setting should know better. That even American business people, you don't just say something like that to a potential customer walking by. I wasn't preaching. I was just minding my own business. And I've given you a little window into Denver culture. People just rude as all get out towards Christian viewpoints out here. I remember walking in Capitol Hill, Denver years ago, and it says, Do not have sex with a pro-life man. I thought, um, there's a woman who's a real mess. She thinks it's okay to have sex on the one hand. That's okay. But if I have a baby as a result of that, I have the right to kill it. Women have condemned men for their sexualness, for their thinking about sex and saying they always think about that. And yet this woman clearly is admitted by that statement, I like my sex. And if I have the inconvenience of a baby, I have the right to kill it. Well, la da but I'll bet you got a dog, and if anybody tried to kill that, you'll have them in an electric chair, right? Fifi versus Joey. When I look at the people laughing and mocking at me, oh yeah, it catches me at first, and then I stop and go, why would you be surprised, Pacific? This American culture is not a godly culture. This American culture from our politicians on down is not encouraging anybody to go close to Jesus, is not encouraging people to be unified together. The only unity that I see developing in our country more and more is a unity towards sin and hate and racism and all the dark stuff. That when somebody can fixate and spend their time, 350 pound overweight, obese guy who has no self-control, can't get on a diet, can't stop his drinking, can't get a decent job, can't do something with his life, is massaging a site on a daily basis with horrible, perverted, guttural things just to tell the world what a piece of trash I am. That tells me so much more psychosis-wise than any other thing. Uh, reading manuals on psychology. Why the fixation? Because this guy knows I'm imperfect, but I've obviously said some things, or rather the Holy Spirit at times has said some things through me that convict this individual. Please notice fixation. Please notice it. Let's talk about it. I have to find it, so bear with me. Fixation is nothing new. Let's see if I can find it. 
hold on, I think I have to uh, let this doggy out. Nope. All right, let's see if I can find it. Ah, this is going to be difficult on me. I used to know where it was, but apparently I don't. Gotta find it. Boy, I gotta find it. Ah, here we go. Let's talk about fixation. And this is the last person you would think would be fixated because the message was to the man, not to the woman. Now, I don't know if the woman was present when John the Baptist gave this message, but this is what, this is called dangerous fixation. And we're seeing that develop on YouTube. And I am calling this out because people like that, they're psychosis in the makings. They're, they're, they're psychos in the making. Because they're generating hate, racism, perversion, and silly, undiscerning Christians are getting on one side of the fence thinking that they're walking right there with Jesus. <clears throat> Let me say something I've learned about fine peace. He does not believe in the doctrine of grace. And I'm going to call that out. The Bible talks about the grace of God. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord should be saved, that if thou shalt believe in thy heart that Jesus rose from the dead and confess with thy mouth, thou shalt be saved. The idea that one can lose their salvation is the doctrine of legalism, and it is cult-like. People that are legalists, I grew up in a lot of churches where I got literally shamboozled into that thinking. Walking around so tight I was afraid of squeaking. And you know what I noticed with all of those people that are legalists? Always, every time, whether it's frozen, chosen, Baptist, they have no love and genuine concern for others except their groupies. Legalism is like a one of those posh golf clubs, men's clubs. Only certain people can be invited. And we have club mentality in Christianity in America. Don't, don't think for a minute that doesn't exist. That if you don't dot your eyes away, I think you ought to dot your eyes. If you don't follow the rules, I think you ought to follow. If you don't believe just like me, you're an anathema. You're an enemy. And that's evidenced in playing out. And I am mentioning fine peace because just as he accused me and insinuated that me looking at pictures was a result of my belief. No, it had nothing to do with my belief. It had to do with the fact I have flesh and I gave into the lust of the flesh. No surprise there, right? We all do that. What are you giving into right now? Anger, rage, slander, strife? Mm, the flesh, right? Generating hate, going to war with other saints. But it revealed something about you. You don't believe we're saints. You believe we're all lost people and you're railing against us, which you never see Jesus railing against unbelievers. He would go and walk into a crowd of people that wanted to hear what he had to say. And the Pharisees show up and go, nah, 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 nah. Jesus said what he said and he walked out of their mix. He didn't stand there and rail. So you might want to check yourself. But legalists have a problem. They're angry people because they don't walk in grace. Paul said, should I go on sinning that grace might abound? And he says, by no means. No, Pacific does not teach that. Oh yes, I can go and have 10,000 women and do whatever I want and God's going to forgive me. That's a wrong view of things. You're trampling his grace. But I've never met a legalist who actually has peace or joy or love. Three fruits of the Spirit. I find them pharisaical in that they put burdens on men that they themselves don't even follow. It's a holy litmus test club. 
If you act and walk just like me, we'll be friends. But the minute you stray from that, it's a cult. Legalism is a cult, and the Apostle Paul talked about it over and over in the context of people trying to bring in the Jewish law. It is, in effect, the same thing, though the legalists in America aren't talking about circumcision. They're telling you that you can lose your salvation, but yet they never believe they themselves can lose it. It's the club rules. We're part of the club. We can't lose it, but all you others do and can. It's a very convenient doctrine. It's an elitist teaching. And people who are legalists have no problem of crossing into the line of hatred, strife-causing, lying, and slander because they're egotistical about their pernicious teaching. False doctrine always produces pride. Grace humbles us. They said an old saying I've heard is that the ground is level at the cross. That is absolutely bang on. That's bang on. That all of us, even Christians that I'm not real happy with right now on YouTubeville, and Christians that I do like, we're all equal at the foot of the cross. Nobody's got any special status with God. Nobody. For all of sin and fall short of the glory and the grace of God has come to those of us that are saved. The sad thing is, is God loves fine peace just as much as he loves me, just as he loves anybody else on my channel that is in Christ that even disagrees with me and goes about it in a wrong way. He loves us all unilaterally, regardless of race, regardless of denominational differences, regardless of even theological opinions and beliefs. And I state opinions because there's a lot of opinions floating around that cannot be backed up by this. So for the accusations made against me for believing in grace versus one who believes you can lose your salvation, but he's never lost it. And it's been told to me he is unemployed. And I've noticed a, a, something about unemployed males. They're horrible. They get fixated with anger. I know. I spent years in a chat room. When I was in Spokane, I quit a really crappy call center job after five months. I had done my best, and it just beat me up. Not physically, but the manager was a spacky half my age. It was riding my butt to get my call handle times down. I said, I get nothing but senior citizens who want number changes, and they're 45 minutes apiece. And he wanted all calls at 12 minutes or less. Even people that had been there for years told me, you cannot do a number change in less than less than 30 minutes at tops and that's only if they're totally cooperative in the process most of the time it takes 45 minutes and i was unemployed for a while and i found myself getting angry i found myself getting fixated and i found myself joining into a chat room with a lot of other people that were unemployed and fights would break out constantly especially on friday nights i noticed when i got a job i found going to the chat room was still fun when i was off but I found myself less of a combative mode. There's an old saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And we see that play out in Exhibit A and Exhibit B. Both of them fixated. Let's talk about a dangerous fixation. Let's talk about somebody who's been convicted and acts instead of repentance or agreeing with God, but does something horrible. Matthew chapter 14, verse 1. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the news about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. For Herod had seized John and bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. When I say that women tend to be more mean than men, I'm not kidding. We always use the term Jezebel more than any other term, and it's a female. For John had been saying to him, notice specifically him, Herod, it is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude because they regarded him as a prophet. But when Herod's birth play, birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Don't think for one minute that she wasn't sensual as all get out. 
I tell you, the Arabians know how to dance and they know how to work it. And when a guy's starting to lust after his own daughter, you, you had to know that the whole environment was out of control at that point. Thereupon, Mr. Lust himself, with his own daughter, he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Do you notice the connection? And I've been so guilty of this. That when I'm into a woman, I tend to spoil her. And women know that, and they work it. Men too easily just open up their wallets, open up and give to these women. Often without really knowing their real heart. Men are motivated more by lust sometimes when it comes to women than their own objectivity. I'm speaking from experience. And having been prompted by her mother, she said, give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. And listen to this man. And although he was grieved, the king commanded it to be given because of his oaths and because of his dinner guest. Herod didn't have John in prison. Apparently, Herod either brushed off the conviction or he just thought, yeah, you're right. His wife says, put that guy in prison. And then he wanted his head. And it says Herod's grieved, but where's the man? You know why? Because when the king makes an edict, he can't go back on it. You do that and you're in big trouble. Forget about standing up for principle. Forget about saying, whoa, 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 whoa. I asked you, daughter, what you want. You cannot have your mother's wishes. He could have stood up and said, uh-uh. Daughter, what do you want? And it's going to be John's head. So there's a lack of leadership by Herod. But the bottom line moral of the story is that woman was fixated on one thing. He said something that offended me. I don't like him. And that is exactly what is going on on my channel. This is more than just pictures. This is more than just specific sordid stories. Because I'm going to tell you something I've learned about psychology. That if somebody really believes somebody's nuts. If somebody really believes somebody's mental. If somebody really believes somebody's perverted, they vacate the premises of that person in all entirety. But when they launch attack after attack and stay there for a year and have one goal in mind, why are they so determined to bring Pacific down? Because something I said went <laughs> right into their gut. Can I say something politely to you, gentlemen? Go take that up with God. That's not my problem. I have people say things to me all the time that go, <clears throat> and it hurts. And there are times when people are right in what they say, and there are times they are wrong. And there are times when people say something that is true, but then it snowballs into something big and outrageous like Mr. Fine Peace. It doesn't make sense to be vilified as much as I am over what? You don't like me. You don't agree with my beliefs. And yet you still watch every damn video I produce. What is wrong with you, Mr. Fixations? And that's plural. How come you're not producing a channel disseminating your twisted view that you can lose your salvation? Why are you not doing an expository Bible preaching video showing all me and my viewers and everybody that were so wrong because you can't why do you not show your picture because well, you don't want people to see what you look like it's very obvious what's going on with you guys why does Goremaster do what he does he's a lost soul and he's convicted yes I have my problems but a lot of Christians can comfortably go to church on Sunday morning and walk right out and get out in their car and not even be convicted by anything that's said from the pulpit. The reason I'm a lightning rod for trouble? Yeah, there's times I brought it on myself. You bet. But more often than not, it's just me being me and talking and people just get all bent out of shape over that. I, One of the first things that struck me when I became a Christian was how powerful the truth of God's word is. 
that the minute I came to Christ within the week, I watched all of my friends just go like a herd of gazelles stampeding in all directions before a major earthquake. I was like, what is going on? I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. The word for the day is cockroach. The light came on in Pacific and the cockroaches went <clears throat> scurried. I know. I've been in apartments. You turn on the light and they're squealing off in all directions. Same with rats. People love darkness rather than light, lest their deeds be exposed. Do you notice these people aren't exposing their inconsistencies? And yet, if you just sit back and patiently watch the way they're demonstrating their so-called righteous wrath, you see all their sins manifest right there, all by themselves. And you hold up that mirror of truth in their face, and they bust the mirror. They'll throw rocks at it, and they'll yell and scream and stamp their feet. <laughs> When people are out of joint, they can't be convicted enough to change themselves. There's a whole testament record of how people didn't handle conviction very well. What did Jesus say? Let's see if we can find it. What did he say? And I'm going to have a hard time finding it. I'm going to tell you that right now. Jesus told the Jewish people, you killed and stoned the prophets. Wait a minute. Did I hear that right? The Jews killed their own Jewish prophets? Yes. Why? Go to Jeremiah. Well, who's this fool telling us that, you know, Babylon's going to take us over? We're not going to listen to this. They threw him in a well. They tried to shut him up. Somebody who's fixated on removing me from my channel means I'm getting to him. That's an undeniable fact. And he takes some of the things that I've admitted in my life, exaggerates them, spin doctors them to paint a picture that I'm some waste of skin. For somebody who's a waste of skin, you're sure spending an awful lot of time on me. You're the one driving up my views. I looked at my subscriptions. In the last few days, they have gone up. Let that sink in. When your intent is to defame and destroy, yes, damage can be done. But sometimes God has a sense of humor, too. And people will go, what is all this drama about? And they'll tune in and go, well, man, I like this guy. What is all the problem here? So if I lose a couple of viewers, not that I don't care, but so what? So what? <laughs> this is a democracy. This isn't the SS communist. I like the analogy of a ship. When I come to port, the gangway's open. You can get on, you can get off. I don't send my crew out there to arrest everybody and drag them onto my boat. If you want to go on this cruise, you can go on it. If you want to disembark the next port, do it. But I'm sailing on, man. Fixation that resulted in somebody's death. I've actually talked to a couple people just this week. And the behavior that both of these people are exhibiting is nothing short of somebody who ends up murdering somebody or crossing the line. The fixation, the hate, the rage. I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to get this guy. The internet world is a subterranean world. And a lot of people are hammering away at lust while ignoring some very insidious things that are brewing in two separate smoking, boiling cauldrons on either side of Pacific's channel. One has posted gay men videos having sex, more perversions, that if all my viewers actually went on to Encyclopedia Dramatica and clicked on a site, that that is way more telling about him and less about me, that somebody takes the time to massage his site every single day.
because it's a miserable wretch of an overweight man who has no life, no employment, and the only thing he's going to do is focus on making this hateful, nasty, satanic, perverted mess. But it's more telling about him that if he was an intellectual, if he was a mature man, if he actually had something of substance, he'd go, man, this guy's a nut job. I'm out of here. That he wants to pull my channel down is so evident about his megalomaniacal ego that the things that they've all accused me of are exactly true of themselves and not so with me. Do I have an ego? Absolutely. Who of us doesn't? The Bible is always talking about you think that John didn't have an ego, but the other disciple outran Peter to the tomb. Hello, bragging much, John? The disciple whom Jesus loved, bragging, John? Don't miss that. We all got an ego. But some people take that ego to dangerous levels. Oh, come here, you nap. I'm not perfect. That's not what this channel's about. And even the people attacking me know that that's the case. If you want to convict Americans and get them riled up faster than anything else, talk about their dogs, their Starbucks, and their SUVs and the way they drive them, and they will get pissed off. Why? Because nobody's talking about it. Nobody's putting a spotlight of focus to show them how ridiculous they look and their obsession with this stupid SUV culture. I saw a freaking commercial yesterday with some geekish doughboy uh, yuppie guy. What do you get when you buy this? More space. And it shows the little kindergarten drawings on the chalkboard and it shows another stupid SUV. And I'm like, you know, people are fixated on these dang things. And when I'm around people that just bought one, they got to let everybody know they just bought this SUV. I mean, it's just, it's become a temple unto itself. And, and people laugh at me when I talk about that. I don't like SUVs. I don't. I grew up on the old Ford Broncos, the old K5 Chevy Blazers. They weren't called SUVs. Those were cool. Those were for serious 4 by 4 -ing. You get these SUVs today, they're all plastic. You go bouncing around in those the way you did the old K5 Blazers, you'll bust up all your undercarriage and tear everything apart. Wreck CV joints, everything's too fragile under there. They're not 4 by 4s they're a joke. They're countrified sedans that you can drive in the city and get through six inches of snow a little better than I can in my two-wheel drive. But you start taking those up to the mountains with deeply rutted wagon trail roads and you will get yourself in a pickle. But the K5 Blazers and the old Dodge Ram Chargers, they had a wheel stance and base, and they could pivot right over all that stuff. The SUV craze is, is nothing short of immature. And speaking of FP, they look like Fisher-Price plastic toys that some toddler would be pushing in the carpet. The style, the design. And I look at the fixation that Americans have that they're not even good-looking. The colors they're picking on them aren't even good-looking. It's like, I do comment on our culture. I can't help it. It's everything but passionate. Materialism has numbed us out. It has made us boring. It has homogenized us. And you go to any mall and they're just temples of materialism. You look at teenagers walking around looking retarded. Girls with their low-cut cleavage shirts. Dragging their feet with their bags of crap. They don't look inspired. They don't look like... They just don't, they look like freaking zombies today. And I will continue to comment on my culture, gore master. And if you don't like it, deal with it. Kiss my, well, don't, don't kiss my butt. No, never mind. You might like that. You, you're the one that's got the problem. If you really, truly have a problem with me, you would go away. But the fixation proves your problem goes deeper than just a hatred of me. You have a hatred of God. Why don't you put together a video saying why this isn't true? Why don't you put together a video with something intelligent? Because you're incapable. You descended the level of a Neanderthal ogre. Sad. I feel like it's a boxing ring. 
I've been pushed out there by the ref. I'm like, whoa, whoa, I don't want to do this. And in this corner, we got Gore Master, and over here, we got Strife Causer. Ding! <laughs> and I'm getting it from both sides. Gore Master, I'm not looking at your site. I don't care anymore. It's a testimony to your to, to, to what you are, and it doesn't paint a good picture of you at all. You're not smart enough to recognize that that's more reflective on you and less on me. I'm starting to wonder if you're demon-possessed. The alliances you have with dark people, the stuff you do, the stuff you post, I have no doubt that you are flaming homosexual and pro-homosexual, and it's no wonder girls have truly rejected you. Take a look at yourself. They don't want to go out with you. Why would they? You're not exactly the epitome of GQ. And you want to put down my looks? I'll definitely say something to you. Go get a job, go on a diet, and straighten yourself up. And if you're convicted by things I say, that's your problem, not mine. Even if my whole YouTube channel disappeared, you think I'm going to stop? I'll go somewhere else and I'll continue making videos. And I will message my fans and they will follow me right over there because they want to hear what I have to say. You're not going to win this game you're playing. Your fixation is going to do what Haman's fixation did. It will turn on yourself. The book of Esther. Haman had a plan to destroy. He hated Mordecai. He hated Mordecai so much. And Mordecai never did anything to him. And he plotted and plotted and plotted. Haman even built gallows ready to hang the guy. You're doing the same thing. You're trying to build your little gallows. You'll hang yourself. You're already doing it. Somebody emailed me yesterday and told me some of the stuff that you're posting and said it's so obvious that your video, you're controlling the shots, not him. You've disabled the comments, you fired back, and he's over here back in the bleachers somewhere where nobody can see him making his stupid little sight. And my viewers that are really committed to Christ, they went over there, some of them, and looked once, and they're like, this is disgusting. None of them said, oh my gosh, Pacific's guilty of all this. They know better. You're, you're not doing anything. You're not reaching, a th you're not reaching thousands of people. You, you, you just, it's, it's darkness. Fixations are dangerous. I see it in the road. I see it in myself. It's amazing how easy it is to get mad at something. And you have to stop and go, okay, that guy cut you off. You tap the horn once. He goes like this. You got to let go. But if you fixate, then you can get sucked into road rage. That's what causes road rage every time is somebody gets fixated. Fixated. At, oh, that guy really angered me. Then you get into the venge mode and I'm going to... Then you start escalating. Goremaster and Strife Causer are both escalating things. They're getting angry. They're getting, they're getting, they're, they're acting. Both of them are, well, you're already in the flesh, Goremaster, but you're both acting in the flesh. You're, you're not walking in the spirit. You're angry. You're fixated. That the intentions and motives of what you're really trying to do, strife causer, are coming out loud and clear. It is not to be corrective. It is not to be done in love. It is not to help better Pacific as an individual. Which reveals the next motive of what's really going on. You're upset that we won't bow to you. You're upset that we won't say you're right. You're our guru. You're the only one that has sound theology, <clears throat> which is more revealing about the megalomania that's in you, which is no difference than the megalomania that's in Goremaster. You're both one and the same. You see, just because we're a Christian doesn't mean that those sins of the flesh just go away, either in me, you, or anybody else. We have to work on it. You got a popularity complex. That's what you got. I don't. 
my channel just happened. It unfolded on its own. And I love all the people accusing me of me having an ego. And I'm like, all I did was tell my story. Knowing that people are laughing, going, oh my gosh, this guy's an idiot. Ha. And there's been many detractors. And while Fine P says, many have written me. There are people that write me on Skype and emails every day saying, I've been watching this drama going on, stand strong and let them have it. They're totally out of line. I've had numerous people write me about my stance on a young lady who wanted to side with somebody. Said, you know, I like her and I like her videos, but she didn't use discernment there. That was wrong. She ignored the 99% of horrible stuff Fine Peace is doing while focusing on the point one that you had already gotten rid of the side anyway, so I'm not understanding. No. When I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, then the confirmation comes. But yeah, the attacks have been just vicious. They've been totally vicious and they've gone on and on and on. And for me to ignore it, but I find myself becoming less angry with it. And now I'm starting to go, man, these guys are just, they're, 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 they're digging their own holes. Fine P still hasn't told us what his employment is. Fine P still hasn't shown who or what he looks like. Fine Peace hasn't answered any of my questions. <laughs> But I did get an email from Schultz that was very interesting about Fine Peace, a.k.a. Christian Advisors' approach to befriend him multiple times and to try to tell Schultz that his belief system was wrong. And when Schultz didn't bow to that, he went into a tailspin of anger and hate. Got a pattern here? I think so. And then the continued allegations that are made against me that I'm following Schultz around. It is only in this last week that Schultz and I have begun emailing each other. My views that I put on my channel are not Schultz's views or anybody else's. They're views that, A, I either base on this, or B, when I specifically state my express opinion combined with my experiences and observation, no, nobody thinks for me. I think for myself. That's why I put that video out. You know what angers trolls more than anything else is when they can't comment and come under fake aliases and IDs like band user and none your business and all this other stupid crap out there. Yep, I called you all out. We know who those people are. The ones in Oregon, he's the one that threatened me. The one that's a uh, banned user, that'd be gore. I mean, it's so obvious what's going on. Why are we hiding, boys? <clears throat> We're done in elementary school playing hide-and-go-seek with our paper pirate hats and paper pirate swords. <laughs> You know who enables me to stand? You know who gives me the gift of speech? God. Does it mean I always say and do everything right? No. You got to put a filter on your own ears, what I say too, and you got to make your own decisions. I'm not here to open your head and spoon feed you my beliefs. You need to check the scriptures yourself. And I don't expect everybody to agree with me on everything. I don't agree with every pastor on everything. I love my pastor, but he believes in laying on of hands and receiving the Holy Spirit. I don't believe in that. I believe that when you become a Christian, the Spirit comes into you. And, and, and I could be a legalist and say, oh, he's wrong on that. That's not a dominant part of his teaching. A dominant part of his teaching is trying to walk in Christian life. And, I, and I'll be honest that if all of us are honest, we all have a tough time with that. But I want to say something, my viewers, that you need to know. Pacific is softening a little in some ways. There was a woman who was a little heavier than I was used to. And I went up and said hi to her yesterday, and I've seen her at church before, and she's actually pretty. And because of what I've been through, it's not that I'm lowering my standard, but I'm starting to go, you know what? She's firm. She takes care of herself. She's clean. She doesn't have rolls of fat. But she's a little bit bigger. And I thought, dang, she looks really nice. And I complimented her. I said, you know, I like your outfit and your little scarf. You look cute. 
she put her hand on me and she goes, thank you so much. And yes, she was a white woman. I'm looking at all these skinny women that I think are so hot. They're pain in the butt. I'm sorry, I, I'm forming more and more of an opinion that these slender women aren't very nice. Any of them in this country, they're just yucky. And, and Pacific is over as Asian fever, yellow fever. People, people still want to call that out. I think Asian women are beautiful, but I've also stood back and watched them. It, it would be unfair for me to not mention the fact that in the years since I've been back to the U.S., I've watched Asian women be just as bad as American women want a man with money. A lot of Asian women aren't after heart either. They're really caught up in externals. The Hello Kitty crowd, you know, I got to have this, I got to have that, and they're uptight as heck. Go live in a house with some of these Asian women, and they're uptight all the time. I'm not finding them so cute anymore. There's problems in every culture. But America's what I call leveling culture. If you really want to know what a woman's like, bring her to America and see how she responds. My point is made, is America evil? Not necessarily. Cultures can produce evil, but more than anything else, America shows us what we really are. It shows women who they really are. When they get over here and realize they have the power of choice and can be picky and they get the power that comes from snubbing all these males, and looking at a dating site like a meat market, it's very empowering. It's more revealing about the ugliness that's within them. And it's easy to say, well, America's a bad place. Not really. America itself is not evil. It's the people in it that promote evil ideologies. And it's a revealer because of the freedoms we have to find out who we really are. That just about every guy on my channel is admitted to looking at pornography. And maybe they won't post pictures on a Tumblr site, but if you were to go through every one of my male viewers' laptops, I'll bet you they've got a couple girly pics, pinups here and there. It's no different than World War II when they painted the dang naked ladies on the freaking bombers. Hello. It's not right, but it's part of the culture with which we grew up in. Gosh, I remember when I was a kid, I'd go to my friend's house and Cheryl Teague and Farrah Fawcett are like this, topless on the wall. But in a feminized female culture, people want to get all bent out of shape over that while ignoring worse sins. Sins that promote complete hatred, possible death or injury to somebody. I've got two people on my site that are both, one claiming to be a legalistic Christian, the other one is not. And both of them, I'm definitely keeping an eye on them from the distance and going, watch them. Of course, Find Peace doesn't want me to call the police department on the other side. <laughs> That's none of your business, pal. I might have to call the police on you. You're scary. Because the hate you're generating and the anger that you're seething on, you need to get a job, dude. You need to get a job. If you're such a advisor, why don't you go up, talk to your pastor? You still haven't mentioned what church you go to and if you have a pastor. I'll bet you you don't. I'll bet you're one of those self-appointed gurus. Well, why don't you go into ministry and start making a living and see if God's actually called you? I don't believe you can and have. You're a legend in your own mind. I don't pick the name advisor because I'm not. I pick the, pick the name of a ship which reflects my heart. I love the ocean and the sea. But God is still in me whether you believe it or not. And God's not done with Pacific. And God is the one that's the captain of my life. Does it mean I'm always in step with him and walk in the spirit? Of course not. But your fixation is disturbing. Your fixation is more indicative of who you are and the ugliness that's within you. And in your attempt to drag me through the mud, you're dragging yourself through the mud and making yourself look like an embarrassing shame to the rest of my viewers. As my friend in Yugoslavia said, find peace as a drone with no engine. It's true. Somebody wrote me yesterday and said, can you imagine being in a lecture class with this guy? 
that the only way to to get away from that is to walk out the door and then he'd be yelling at you because you're leaving the class. Uh, That's accurate. You don't embody Christian virtue, dude. You don't embody love. You don't embody care. You're a legalist. And I put my finger right in the eye of your little self-righteous holy club and you're really mad. Sorry, I don't join clubs. Even if I was a multimillionaire, I wouldn't join a yacht club and I wouldn't join a gentleman's club. And if they all came to me, I'd say, no, thank you. I drive a 20-year-old truck and I'm not part of this crew. That's what makes Pacific unique is that I do think for myself. And I've always said, I don't expect to go through life having a bunch of followers. You know, when the Queen Mary came into Long Beach, there was a flotilla of tugs and boats and spray boats and everybody coming in to welcome the ship. But if you if you pay attention to me long enough, I start heading out to deep water and I'll come out on the bridge and I'll look back over the stern and there's nobody back there. I like it out there in deep water. I don't want people following me. I want people to sail their ocean. And I don't mean this in a fierce independence way, but God's got a course for me. And it's not the course for everybody else. We need to be one in agreement on this. But God's life path for you is not the same as Pacific Ocean Superliners. Sometimes I've docked into some pretty filthy ports. Sometimes I've docked into some real self-righteous ports. But if we all analyze our life, we've all done that in a way. No, Pacific's channel is not about perfection. Pacific's channel is about being real. Pacific's channel is about growth. Pacific's channel is about promoting honesty within ourselves to admit that even with this war going on, these two individuals are revealing more about themselves and less about me. The other reason I got rid of the comments, I'm tired of people saying, don't pay attention, don't do, you know what, I'll do what I need to do. Since when does the crew have the right to come up to the captain on the bridge and say, don't steer that way? Hey, I'm the one at the wheel here. You're down in the engine room. Take care of the engines, please. On that note, it's not a democracy. I'll make the ultimate decision which direction I'm going to sail this channel. That's why most of you all are here. Because if I were to sail the channel the way everybody else would have me do it, I'd be a political correct ball of mess, wouldn't want to offend anybody, and I wouldn't have anybody railing against me on both sides. There wouldn't be any war. If you want to know the proof that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, look at the vicious, vitriolic, hateful attacks on me. Not because they've got some dirt and scudge. I've already admitted that long before they came along. No, they're bothered by things I say. If you're so sure of your pernicious doctrine, then you should rest in that and have peace about it, right, dude? Your goal is to take my fans down with you. That's not a very lofty goal now, is it? I haven't even come on other people's channel with the intent intent of trying to destroy their channel and pull their fans. Because Pacific is actually has peace with one thing. My channel's very democratic. You're free to come and go. I encourage feminists, gays, lesbians. In fact, more so them than some of these Christians I'm meeting. Shoot, we've got a lesbian girl from Germany that gets on my site. And I know she probably doesn't agree with everything, but she doesn't hate me. She said she likes my videos. How do I view that? Gee, at least I'm having an audience that most Christians never get the privilege of having, right? Paul talks about people trying to malign him, and he says, but whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. I am preaching Christ, and I'm not doing it in pretense. There's atheists that come on my channel. There's Muslims that come on my channel. One of the nicest girls to me online ever in my life, back in 2008, was Listy. 
young Muslim woman in her 20s, saw my profile on Mate One, same time Beth did. Beth only looked, she didn't comment. I should have taken that as my cue, but I'm starting to learn something. Some counsel that my coworker gave me the other day was very, very, wow. <clears throat> yeah, first I got offended, but when it just settled down in there the way it was supposed to, I said, you know, he's right. He put his hand on my shoulder and he says, you need to let life come to you. I said, what do you mean by that? We're working on battery installing the truck. And I said, what do you mean? He said, stop trying so hard. I said, so you're saying I should? No, I'm not saying that. But he said, whether it's a pursuit of a girl or whatever, he says, just let life come to you and just see what happens. And I did. I got upset. I didn't yell and scream. And I'm like, whatever, dude. But this week, when truth is spoken, it's like a termite. And it just starts gnawing at you. And I go, you know what? And then the pastor's sermon this week was about trying to do everything in our own strength. And I thought, yep, there we go. It's all dovetailing together. And I'm honest with myself. I've been trying to do everything in my strength. I've been trying to battle these enemies in my strength. And I'm doing it less and less. I'm just starting to say, clearly, if you look at their actions, they're not lining up with this. And everybody is making a big deal about me posting pictures that isn't done anymore. And they're still going on about that. And nobody's looking at all these sins that they're doing. And nobody's confronting them while they were quick to confront me after the fact of giving a thumbs up endorsement. I'm not supposed to comment on it. You got to be kidding. I'm a free man. I definitely comment. It looks pretty suspicious. looks pretty stupid seeking to justify herself, himself. And as somebody wrote me yesterday, it's interesting to see what has happened in the last couple weeks. People that you really thought were some of your greatest people have acted a little bit less than. Let me say something to my viewers. I don't believe in hate, though there are people I don't love. <clears throat> The difference between me and Christian advisor slash find peace is that I'd love to see things restored between us because discord among brethren is not good. That The Bible is very strong on that and we got discord among brethren going on all over the place right now. That's not good. But by the same token, I'm not going to sugarcoat things. Whether people agree with me or not, that's your right to disagree. When we descend into hate, descend into, well, I'm going to unsubscribe from him. Right? Go ahead. <laughs> You're a free person. But don't fault the captain when he makes decisions. I can't go back and forth. I have to be decisive and I have to say, you know what? I'm not going to tolerate that. That being said, <clears throat> does Pacific hate find peace? I've been through this before, and I'm not fond of legalists. They have an MO, they have a way that they all copy each other. It's the same. It's nothing new. The self-righteous rantings, the, the hatred, the stirring up people, the you're not fitting into my club, and because you won't join my little club, I'm going to stamp my feet and wet my pants and do a little diaper dance. That's exactly what's going on. Dude, if somebody isn't joining your club, you might want to step back and take a look as to why. Why would I want to belong to that kind of Christianity? Obviously, your Christianity hasn't given you peace because you are railing. I have my problems. There's days I don't have peace. I'll be the first to admit, sometimes I don't have peace. Sometimes I fret and stew and get all bent out of shape about something. Sometimes I'm operating in my strength and I feel like God's saying... Pacific, calm down, slow down. <clears throat> and I need to say something for record. I don't hate you, Deshaya. I think you're a sweet little girl. I do. I don't mean that derogatorily. I don't think I'm better than you. I think in some ways you have some outstanding qualities. My only message to you is I would never tear you apart because 
I'm not like that. You're my sister. I don't like that you subbed and thumbs up all that without coming to me and saying, Pacific, I got a problem with this. I wish you had done that. I wish you'd have been mature enough to say, Pacific, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that you posted stuff like that. I told you I would have listened to you. But what else concerns me is I hope, and I don't know what you do in your own personal life, I hope you've taken the time to confront, find peace with the hatred he's generating for the strife causing he's generating. I hope that you will also thumbs up my videos when I talk about that. I hope you'll thumbs up my videos on that point. But I don't know. I don't look to see who thumbs up. I guess you can do it through Google. I don't do that because I really don't care. <clears throat> I've set all the settings on my videos to off anyway. So you pull up my video, there is no thumbs up or thumbs down unless it shows up in Google. <clears throat> and the thumbs up still have been outweighing the thumbs down. Because the fact is, even if there is 10,000 thumbs down, it doesn't matter. They're still watching the videos. If they really hated it, why do they keep coming back and back? And like I said before, it's humorous to watch. The video isn't even up there for 10 seconds and a thumbs down goes. It's like, wow, they didn't even listen. They're just doing this. <clears throat> That's more telling about them. This isn't about, I have an issue with his teachings. I have an issue. I hate this guy. I hate him. I'm going to make a public statement that I hate him. I'm going to fixate on that. And I'm going to take every moment of every day to massage a channel or a website on Encyclopedia Satanica, any Christian goes and looks at that site and looks at the founder and looks at the stuff that he's promoting, um, I'm going to be blunt, it is way more insidious than the pictures I was posting of nude women, topless women. It is nothing short of demonic, satanic darkness, complete with dismembered body parts, blood and gore, homosexual videos. Yep, that's all been posted on the site this fool Gormaster made. Gormaster is a very unstable mental emotional mess that he takes time to even do something like that. Instead of using any creative talent that he might have and doing something, this is the best offering he can put out. And I did get mad at first, but now I just shake my head and go, this guy is really stupid. He doesn't realize that that's more reflective of, of how he is jobless, spinning and spiraling around in his alcoholism, his obesity. He's depressed, and all he can do is attack. He will not get off the couch and do something with his life. It's easy to sit and gain more weight and grab another bottle of beer and just type crap all day long. Do you know that we've got a, hundreds of thousands of people in America doing that? That for the greatest nation on earth, we've got some of the biggest troublemakers sitting on the internet right now, spewing hate, racism, perversion, satanic garbage. You can't reach those people. But I come back and will always come back. They're hypocritical and they're shooting themselves in the foot when they say they hate me so much. Then go away. Go show the world you can do something better than me. You can't. And you won't because you can't. And it's not about me being better in a competition, but your fixation proves that you got mental problems. I'm going to say something, and it's time, because it's in my heart, and I don't want to hide it, and I will be accused of racism for saying this. I've noticed something since I've come back to Denver, but I also noticed something when I was in Hong Kong, and that was fleshed out to me by a woman I rented from in Spokane, that we were talking one night about this up and down with Beth. <clears throat> 
she allowed me to use her phone. She said, don't buy a phone, save your money. She had really tried to encourage me to get Beth back to the United States. So I applied for immigration visa and all that through a Russian attorney. And um, the phone would ring and be Beth and I'd answer it. And she'd hear me talking to Beth. And after I get off, she goes, what is that girl's problem? You call, you're so pleasant. Oh, hi, how are you? And she is just biting at you. And I said, it's like that every time we talk on the phone. She said, you know, Pacific, I was thinking about something. You say you want to live in the Philippines, but, and you think all these smiling, sweet, brown-skinned women, but she says, do you know if you actually were over there and you were able to get visa and you were there, and that woman who's already turning on you and showing ugliness, that if she turned on you, that the rest of that village would not accept you because you're not one of them. And you know, when she said that, it was kind of like a deja vu. I said, you know, never thought about that. She goes, you'd be alone and you'd be the bad guy because you're the white American. She goes, it doesn't matter what she's doing. She's one of them. When I came back here to Denver, I was open to dating the Hispanics. The Hispanics hate each other. I've seen that demonstrated in the Vega room. There's so much division in that camp, it's not even funny. And if you look at the average Hispanic family... <clears throat> The hatred, the rape, the incest, the garbage that goes on, which is epidemic in Denver. But yet if one white guy shows up in the neighborhood, they'll all line forces against that white person. I've also seen another dynamic, and I'm going to say it, and it's not racist. <clears throat> a lot of black people don't get along with each other, but if there's a white man involved, they'll join forces against him. <clears throat> I've watched this stuff. That increasingly, when I say I'm an outsider, I'm seeing it right in my own country. I'm living in a place that is not dominantly white anymore. <clears throat> they're not inviting me to their reindeer games. Now they're taking from us. They're taking advantage of our kindness. They're using us. They're cleaning up. They're promoting their own in jobs and businesses in the Denver metro area. The city government is being infiltrated with Hispanics and blacks. And there's less and less whites. And you're seeing a breakdown because of ethnicity. You see the Hispanic guys driving the city garbage trucks. They don't follow the traffic laws. They do crazy things. And you call and you get a Hispanic boss. Oh, yeah, I'll deal with it. Yeah, right. I'm watching racism rear its ugly head the other direction. Pacific reads people. I'm a student of people. My uncle has told me that. And I've watched. I'm very open to ethnicity. I'm open to things. But at the end of the day, there's things that are undeniable about facts that go on. <clears throat> Watching dynamics play out on the channel. It's like, oh, that's noteworthy. That's interesting. So that necessitates me making a statement. And I've said it before, but I'll need to reiterate again. I don't base my commentary on popularity polls. I don't base my commentary on ethnicity polls. I don't base it on female versus male polls. I base my commentary on what I feel is deeply in my heart and that I believe and hold dear as a conviction, and I put it out there. And if people don't agree, they don't agree. But it doesn't mean, oh, they did, that didn't score points. I better change my view. My views are my views. My views, if I say it is backed up in scripture experience, I state that as such. <clears throat> That a real man or woman is tested if she's or he is the only one standing on the hill, will they still hold to those convictions? And the answer is yes. I've already known loneliness. What's another rejection by somebody else? It's I've never even seen face to face. Nothing. And yet I still have a faithful bunch of people that constantly come. The channel has not suffered. We've had a few grenades hit the deck and start deck fires that were immediately extinguished, but the ship hasn't been torpedoed and sank. To use an analogy. One of the reasons people connect with the channel is because I'm genuine and I'm real. We admit struggles. 
and people who don't admit struggles, people, especially in America, people who got that drawbridge and the uptight, upright position, they're the ones that will mock faster those of us that are so real about our struggles. You'll never get them to admit theirs as they grab another bottle of beer and gain another hundred pounds. Those are the people that are sitting on the internet. The 400 pound innocent girl that used to frequent a chat room from Bakersfield, California, slamming everybody to the wall. And then when he posted a picture, I went after him. I said, wow, you have put everybody down in here and you're what? He says, I'm 400 pounds, so what? I said, now it's all starting to be clear. Were you bullied as a kid? Were you laughed at and put down? Most of the people that came into chat rooms were obese and overweight <clears throat> and would never post a picture of themselves. They were ashamed of their looks. And they were some of the meanest people I knew. Slamming, putting down. None of those had the guts to come to a person's face and say that. The internet became a great subculture for lazy people that don't want to change. The internet became a great subculture for malcontents, pissed off people, people with all their anti-whatever sentiments that now they can get on here and spew venom all day. The picture becomes clearer when you step back and just watch. <clears throat> and if we think that's best because we're Christians on the internet, that things become more pure, they don't. When I was in a chat room, I saw women that claimed to be virgins coming in that chat room. Well, the reason they were a virgin is they were 350 pounds and nobody wants to have sex with them. And they were grandstanding that they were so morally pure. And yet their attitude that came forth on the microphone and the text they were typing was anything but Christ-like. And I'm sitting there going, this is supposed to be a Christian chat room and I don't see anybody acting right. <clears throat> and I had a forum then. I went into a room that was dominated by a woman called Debbie from Minnesota. She had little bookends on either side of her name. She was awful. And I admit, my involvement in that chat room hardened and glazed me, and I picked up some of the bad habits. I remember I'd see her type, LOL, retard. And I remember saying, boy, do you think that's Christ-like? Shut up, Pacific, you scumbucket, low-life worm. Whoa, I thought this was Christian chat. I mean, I was ignorant. And it'd be easy for the detractors to say, well, do you go to chat room? What do you expect? I didn't know what to expect. You want to know what's sad? For all the people in there that were Baptists and Lutherans and Catholics and the people claiming to be Christians, I only had a handful of people that I got along with that admitted they were imperfect, but they believed in God and we got along and we'd have conversations. But the people were the nicest to me. That's why I mentioned Listy. Listy was a Muslim. She showed me respect. She liked me. She was warm to me. The Christian woman I chased in Hong Kong was not respectful, was not warm to me. The people in the chat rooms that were nice, unfortunately, were people that were lesbian, people that were gay. There was a woman who was not a Christian. She was part Native American. She lived in Buffalo, New York, and I actually started getting attracted to her. She was rough as hell. Foul mouth. And you know what? We actually exchanged phone numbers. And I mean, I pick up the phone and the first word out of her mouth is, where the F have you been? I'm like, wow, there's a nice greeting. That was when I was in Spokane. And I met her before I'd married Beth. She goes, you ought to come up here. I said, oh, I don't want to live in Buffalo. No. But she was involved with a guy in Denver who had threatened her in the chat room. Who used to drive an RTD bus making threats. There was so much crazy stuff that went on in that chat room. It was unbelievable. But I got to know this girl and she painted beautiful paintings. And she softened the more she talked to me. She had a feistiness in her that I liked. She was cute. She had a lot of physical problems. She'd been through a lot of rejection. And she had an edge.
I admit that for a long time growing up in the Christian background that I tended to look at those people as low-life scumbags. And sometimes I still do. But when I took the time to get to know somebody, I found myself irresistibly attracted to that person. We're not in touch anymore. I remember she warned me. She goes, oh my gosh, you're going over there to marry this Asian girl? You know what? I'm going to tell you. It's going to backfire. I said, no, it won't. She goes, yes, it will. She goes, I really like you, man. I think you got to stay right here in the U.S. And I didn't listen to her. She was rough. But then I saw the lady side come out. I'm very hard on American women. But I told the lady the house yesterday, looking for a Christian woman in this country is scary. In fact, it will shock my viewers to admit that I'd rather meet a tattooed sweetheart who's passionate in bed, who loves me, who can take some criticism, who can also criticize me in the right way, and who's got a little bit of feistiness but playfulness, but where we really love with each other, I'll deal with the tattoos. More and more, my mind is stealing itself against, forget the Christian prude, forget it. I watch their double-minded ways, no thanks. The sweet little innocent Christian girl, no thank you. Now, I'm not putting those down that are. But there's certain characteristics that go with that that are immature. Not the kind of a girl I'd want in the middle of a full-on war front assault. I'm going to be very honest. I posted a picture when I had my Facebook up of a Japanese woman holding a sword, and she was quite sexy looking. It was a painting. And I noticed all the women thumbs up that photo. This is going to contradict a lot of what I say, but my view has morphed a little bit. I want a woman who's a warrior for me. Not some self-righteous biatch who thinks she's better than everybody else, but a woman who says, you know what, that's my man. I'm not going to put up with this crap coming out of your mouth towards him. Shut up. I want a woman like that. I want a woman who's a lady to me, but a warrior for what's right. Not fighting me. And I'll be very honest. I'd rather have a woman that had a little more of a wild past than a prissy Pollyanna past. A lot of Christians are what I call boring people because, because they've avoided a lot of sin, and that's good. I would tell everybody, avoid it. But those are the ones who want the nice, neat little house and get in debt for the SUV and have the dog and have the Starbucks and have the whole American iconic image <clears throat> with Norman Rockwell paintings hanging on the wall or Thomas Kincaid, painter of light, and you go to their houses and you feel very uncomfortable in those places. If the people that lived in the mobile home park weren't a problem, I could live in a trailer. I don't care for them, but I could live in a trailer. What I want is passion. What I want is love and life. I look at Americans, they are so dang vain. <clears throat> Delivering trucks or driving through a neighborhood in Commerce City. And <clears throat> I said, you know, this neighborhood back here is kind of cool. And he says, well, these are old houses that need TLC. I said, I know. I love them. I don't want that sterile $500,000 house that's all showtime with white carpet, white walls, and vinyl siding and, you know, the, you know, the fake motif all over it. I like those old houses with the clabbered side of the paint, clabbered siding and the paints peeling off. They were well built. They were solid. You can transform any structure. You can't do much with these new houses. You start banging on them and the whole thing falls over. Same it is with a woman. Sometimes I'm a contradiction because 
there are things I don't like. I don't like it when a woman's unladylike, but in the last three years since I've been back to Denver and God has chosen to put me in the middle of a very rough and tough culture, I'm finding myself liking the Christian prudes less and less because they're not real. I am not going to walk on eggshells in my own pickup truck on a date with a woman like that. This will really shock people. It's not Christ-like, but I'd rather have a woman joke at me and say, F you, man, and I say it back. I want a woman I can be playful with and be myself around. I want Christ to eventually get control of this tongue of mine, and I want him to get control of my heart of mine, but it ain't going to be done through a self-righteous religious edifice of a woman who's looking at me as some bad guy because I've been around the block a few times and she hasn't. I don't believe women should put tattoos on their bodies, but yet there are times I've seen a woman with some tattoos and I found her to be sexy too. So sometimes there's a little bit of a contradiction there. Sometimes some of the women that have tattoos I've gotten along with better than the ones who don't, who look the wholesome Christian image. You go to churches today and they're rude and they're stuck up and they got their little club rules over, I'm not going to date you because. You know, I'm sorry, but it is a form of rejection and some of us are tired of it. So why... Lower the bucket in the Christian well when all you're getting is sand. I want to drink a cool water, and if I can get it from a woman who, who happens to love Christ, but is a little more unconventional than what you see at the church, I'm in. A lot of my viewers don't recognize that when I say I'm a school bus driver, they think of kids and they think of innocence, but they don't think of the whole industry. There's the mechanics, there's the people who fuel the buses, there's the people who drive the buses. Most of the people driving school buses aren't your sweet American classic women. Hi, kids! They're rough and they're tough. The trucking industry. The, the roads that I've been down aren't what I call the prudish sweetie ways. I've been around rough and tough sailor cussing women and men. Does God love them too? Did God send his son for them? Yes. There's Christian truckers out there that use language, but they love Jesus and they listen to the Bible on tape when they drive a mile after endless mile in a semi-truck with the idiots in their yuppie mobiles cutting them off. You know, everybody's got an image that these truckers are bad guys. And I see these, these what I call these refined on the outside look, the ones that wear the right clothes and the white people that are groomed and wear the suits. They are the biggest threat to our entire culture more than anybody else. Let me say that one more time. The well-dressed, the so-called well-heeled Christian Sunday morning attenders are the biggest threat to this nation. They're the ones that run the Enron scandals. They're the ones that got us into the subprime mortgage scandal. They're the ones that have destroyed the national deficit. The average blue collar worker isn't destroying this country. The women that have tattoos on their bodies aren't destroying this country. Sometimes some of the biggest problems come from the religious camp more than the atheists. Religious people that look down their nose at everybody. Religious people that say, you don't act just as I act. The club rules mentality. And there's no real Christianity behind them. It's all religion. Hatred, anger, strife causing looking down on somebody because they're not quite like them. Those are the ones that are rabid materialists. Those are the ones that are in the pursuit of the American dream. Never mind the fact the world's going to hell in a handbasket and there's dire poverty all around. Those kind of women are the ones that fuss when their crocus croaks in the front yard. And with all due respect... I watched a woman once panic over a couple flower pots of new flowers she had planted that a hailstorm of golf ball sized hail was supposed to be coming. And I said, you know, if that hail comes, it's not going to just destroy those flowers. It'll destroy all the cars, destroy the house, the roof. I know, but I don't want to lose my flowers. This, this is a true story. 
this is the America that Pacific lives in. And I'm not supposed to comment and look at this culture and go, you got to be kidding me. Flowers versus roof, auto windshields, the trees, everything else. Yeah, that, that is what we've become. Christian women that want to focus on a man posting pictures instead of focusing on all the other junk that that person who is making an issue about this. Yeah, Pacific is going to speak out about that. It shows a sign of a real problem in our culture. It confirms what I said, that everybody focuses on the lust, but they ignore all the other sins that could get somebody killed. This this fixation with a rage against me could cause this guy to get in his truck, find me, and stick a knife in my back. But nobody cares about that. I wonder what others that are supporting these buffoons would do if it found out that Pacific was killed by some of these crazed fools that are still being lunatics. You might want to think about what you're doing. If I lose fans because I've spoken out against a nice Christian girl, said I don't agree with what you're doing, I'll deal with the fallout. I don't hate that person, but I am going to say you biffed. And I've got a lot of confirmation in the last few days on that. Literally from around the states and the world said, oh, she, that wasn't good. And then you very nicely said, you're a little sensitive. Your channel's a lightning rod for trouble. You're a magnet for trouble. And in your own little sweet way, you put me down. That was cool. But it sucks. Yeah, I'm going to say something. People come to me and say, I appreciate Pacific because he has the balls to say the things that nobody else will say. <clears throat> and very few people actually modeled that. Instead of coming in and say, Pacific, I'm concerned about you putting these pictures on the Internet. Could you rethink this? Nobody said, hey, can I talk to you? Can we talk? And, nope. But everybody's getting on other pages. It's, it's typical Facebook teenage bull crap. Pacific's losing his mind. I've been watching this. Oh, you didn't come and tell me that, but you blasted on her page. <clears throat> when are Christians supposed to do this? I'm going to jump on this side. I'm going to jump on that side. How come nobody had the guts to come up and not one of these people came up to me and said anything? That's more telling about who and what they really are. They waited for an opportunity to pounce. Godliness? Don't think so. I don't want a Christian woman like that. I'd rather have a Christian woman that struggles with masturbation, that might have a tattoo, that might run off her mouth sometimes, but who throws her arms around me and says, I love you so much, and anybody stands in the way of that, I'm going to be a warrior. I want a woman like that. I don't want this other flaky doodle Christianity, and I'm going to call it that flaky doodle. When I look at Strife Causer and what he's doing, that is not biblical Christianity, not at all. But this is what happens when Americans think themselves to be so right in everything. You can't correct people like that. You can't teach them anything. They're unteachable. Warn a divisive man once, twice, third time, have nothing to do with him. And if you, any of you guys following that protocol, you're all bent out of shape about my Tumblr pictures. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I posted those because this has revealed something about all of us. That people focus on the sin they themselves are not guilty of while ignoring stuff that could actually cause harm to somebody. Reputations being destroyed. Nobody has said a damn word about that. That all jumped on fine pieces bandwagon. I have the mind of God on that one. And I won't back down at all. Disgusting stuff to observe. That's good. My channel needed to be cleansed. Get rid of them all. Let them go. I don't, with, with friends like that, who needs enemies? Man, when the war comes down and things come apart, I'd rather have a man who can write to me privately and say, Pacific, you're wrong on this one. Get that Tumblr site off of there and quit it. You didn't do that. You did it behind the scenes. And like I said, and I'll say it again, and even my fans wrote me and said, isn't it funny that when you said that you see who thumbs up in the video and then the next day somebody's asking for my email to explain herself? <laughs> a little late. Sorry. And I'm going to say that.
And I said it again because it's like, this is the kind of thing that has always provoked me to be a little annoyed about Christians in the U.S. They don't see all the sins that we do. They only see the one that's the major. Lust, homosexuality, and abortion, the big American three. That's the trio of you know, you want to get your congregation to rage, start speaking about those things. Preach to the choir. Yep, it's wrong. But we don't talk about strife causers. We don't talk about people promoting hate. We don't talk about the way Christians lynch mob and attack other people who defended me. One saying, you don't know me or Brother Pacific. Pacific doesn't like to reject people. But I'll say it again. There's people I'm close to that I haven't even written to because I'm so disgusted with what has happened. It's like, you know what? I'm going to have to think about this one for a while. And I may never get back to them. I am not going to be manipulated by people to be what you think I ought to be. Let me make that crystal clear. I'm not going to be manipulated by anybody, not even God, because God wants us to come from a willing heart. It says, let him who gives, give with a cheerful heart. If you can't do it out of a gracious cheerfulness, then don't give the tithe. It's a waste of time. And the same it is with our Christian walk. God is not here to coerce us into compliance and complicity. God wants a willingness. And the only way that willingness is going to come is when he changes my heart. My heart is vile, folks, and so is yours. And it's all showing up all over the place that in the middle of all this Christian buffoonery that's going on, which is exactly what it is, we're showing nothing but division. We're showing not love and we're showing all this stuff. And people will say, yeah, and you're promoting it by talking about it. No, I'm not. I'm pulling it out and saying we all need to get healed here. I'm waiting for some apologies which I'm sure will never come because some people owe that. This went way above and beyond some porn images to the ridiculous levels it has now. And if you guys can't see it, I don't want anything to do with your Christianity. No, thank you. Que sera, sera. Sayonara. I want people that want to grow. I want people that admit that they're having a hard time growing and are struggling. I don't want to attract a bunch of people on my channel that are on freaking beds, gaining weight, and pissing and moaning about the world. I want people who want to make a change. When I got a guy who texted me last night, which I haven't answered him yet, says, I don't understand what I've done where people hate me so much. I just, and I was going to respond back, it's easy. You were just being yourself. America doesn't encourage vulnerable realness. My channel has evidenced that. Me being real and vulnerable... Open me up for vicious, hateful attacks, including by Christians. Instead of somebody going to Matthew 18 and saying, hey, you know, Brother Pacific's doing something wrong. I need to go talk to him. There was no maturity there. There was no Christian love there. But everybody got on the holy bandwagon. Oh, Pacific's lusting. Yep, we got to confront this. I agree with him on this. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Be careful. God will hold you to the same thing. Are you convicting that man of all the hate he's generating, all the strife, all the false accusations you made? Have you dealt with that? No, you haven't. God's going to deal with you on that. I promise you. That's a huge discrepancy. If you're going to go behind my back and agree with this guy, but not confront him with the things he's doing wrong, and then you didn't come to me in private, you think that God's going to stand there and go, I'm so proud of you. Don't think so. God's holiness is perfect. And if you're going to get involved in that holiness game, you better make sure that you're consistent all the way across the board. You can agree with him on that point, but he was not right in making a video about me at all. He should have came to me and said, Pacific, this is disturbing. He could have even threatened. He said, if you don't, Pull that site down and change. I will make a video. Okay, fair enough. I've been given a warning. Nope, nothing. Nothing. Am I afraid because I got caught? Got caught what? I told everybody I was posting the site. These people are the ones making themselves look like utter fools at this point. Generating hate. And then their motive becomes clear. All they want to do is pull down my channel. Find peace. 
subscribership is going up several each day. You're not accomplishing your goal. Get over yourself. Get over your megalomania. I'm not going to follow your cultic, legalistic thinking. If you don't want to believe in the grace of God, it is showing by the evidence of your hate. You are loveless. You are cold. God has removed your candlestick from its place. Read the church of Ephesus. But I have this one thing against you that you've left your first love. You are not exhibiting love for the Lord and you're not exhibiting love for your fellow brother. You are promoting hate. I don't want that. I want to get along with you. You're not making it easy to do so. You're causing strife. You're lying. And I will accept your apology. But if you think I'm going to apologize to you, absolutely not. I owe you nothing of an apology. I was wrong in posting that stuff, but I still don't owe you an apology for that. I owe an apology to God for submitting to that. But I don't owe you an apology. You're the one that went and looked and dug around on there and pulled up photos. That's disturbing. Did you admit to everybody why you were there? You were looking for dirt because you're a megalomaniac and you can't get a following. And you're you, you, with you, it's all about a competition. I've called you out. You've dug your grave. You keep throwing spoonfuls of dirt over it. And you don't see that you're digging your own grave. Put yourself in your own coffin. And one of these days, when you're done spreading around and spinning in your anger, you're going to burn out like a 4th of July fireworks. <laughs> Dust all over the ground. That's it. If you don't agree with my theology and you don't agree with this or that, and you're not going to be a public man and you're not, you know, we're done with your false accusations of all these women. I don't care. If the women don't want to go public, they're cowards and they're chickens. And there's nothing to go public about. Because I can tell you that any woman that was involved with me, one that I can think of, I find it very hard to believe that she'd come to you with any of that when she was participatory in things herself. I'm not worried about that. I don't believe she would contact you. She was not a fan of a lot of my viewers anyway when viewers tried to befriend her on Facebook. She goes, I don't want to befriend these guys. I said, don't. As much as I like some of my fans, when they were pushing a couple times to befriend Maharani, I was starting to go, why are they being so pushy? Sending her friend request, friend request, and how come she's not answering? Uh, because she doesn't want to, and I told her, don't befriend my male friends. And the reason for that is because I know the heart of man. Maharani's cute. I'm jealous. I don't want my fans flirting her. And some would. Yes, we're human. Why do I know that? Because I know myself. I wasn't messaging other people's girlfriends. Fans of mine that got girlfriends, I don't want to be in contact with them because it's not appropriate. Anyways, Pacific has dealt with that issue, and that's a done deal. And the fact that Strife Causer is still going on and on and on, and the fact that Strife Causer had Christian Visor as his name, and then he went over to find peace, shows another form of uh, deception, smoke, and mirrors. Why didn't you keep your Christian advisor moniker? That's interesting. You know, the whole thing is shady. The whole thing looks suspicious. I've been out here in the open and I've been just attacked and attacked and attacked. I've been open about what I did. I've been open about stopping what I did. I've been open about admitting that, yeah, that was wrong. And you guys, you're, you're still playing your little game. You don't have peace, dude. Maybe that's a good name. Find peace. Let me know when you find it. Actually, I'll know when you find it because you'll stop your little war. Because people that are at war like you are and generating all this hate, you don't have peace with God. Because if you have peace with God, it outflows. And I don't always have peace because there's times I do things that aren't going to give me peace. But I'm not out warring. You are. You're the one running around generating hate. I'm not writing any of your people and sending them nasty grams and hate messages. I didn't even get onto Shia's channel and leave one comment. I'm going to address it right out. I'm not going to leave comments. It's pointless. She gave an explanation of why she did. I thought it was flaky. And I'm going to say that. I don't hate the woman, but a level of respect that I've had for her has taken a tumble. That's being honest. But would I call her names and say horrible things about her? No. 
Not at all, because then I'd be crossing a line and God will judge me for that. She is my sister. And I still recommend Christian Woman watch some of her videos. She's got good stuff on there. But, find peace, you're, you're a devil. <laughs> you're, you're, you're far from walking in the Spirit. Far from walking in Christian love, virtue, joy, peace, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. I don't see it. Oh, I can be rough around the edges and stuff, but you're a monster. You're a complete walking monster on my channel. And you keep going on. Some of my viewers said, I think this guy's on meds. One viewer said, I know he's unemployed. You're showing all the symptoms of an unemployed guy who's bored with nothing to do, and you're fixated. There's 66 books in here. There's six point something billion people in the world, and there's so many interests. Why are you focusing on one tiny head of the pin thing called Pacific? Because you don't like the things I say, that's why. You're convicted. I have stepped on your toes somewhere, and instead of dealing with that before you and your so-called God, you're just waging a war against me that's a foolish war. To give you a good analogy, it's like a little two-year-old coming up to the hull of Queen Mary and taking a little pebble and going tink, 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 tink against the hull, thinking he's going to crack it in half. Keep pounding, kiddo. You ain't going to do it. It's Monday, everybody. I want you all to have a fun day. And Pacific is still sailing on, and Pacific will still continue to espouse his viewpoints and share with you my understanding of the Bible, my understanding of experiences, and what I hold dear. <clears throat> we need to pray for this country. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray for the strife that's going on in this channel that it comes to an end, especially amongst believers. We can't do anything about the clowns out there that are lost, but we can definitely pray that there would be peace. <clears throat> and where restoration is due, restoration. But this stuff, I'm going to tell you that it's time for me to take the lead and say this stuff is ridiculous. And um, I'm going to call it out what it is. That every church has this. No surprise, this channel has this. Strife causer needs to quit causing strife. He needs to get peace with God, and he needs to stop it. That this is not Christ-like behavior. This is not walking in the fruit of the Spirit. It's not walking in the Spirit. It's destructive. But more and more, it's becoming destructive against himself. That if any so-called Christian godly women keep following this nut job and what he's doing, they're going to start getting tired of it and go, Wow, you really are an angry, balled-up mess here. <clears throat> I'm going to tell something to my viewers. I'm going to make a bold statement. If any woman has something against me and you feel I've done something inappropriate to you, you need to come to me and talk to me about it. And if I'm not listening to it and I'm guilty of something, then you go get somebody else who can be trusted. You don't go to a person like Fine Peace and have a one-on-one -on -one females going to some male. Do we know if Fine Peace struggles with masturbation? No, we don't. Do we know if he looks at porn? We do because he looks at my Tumblr account deep into it and downloaded the pictures. So he's a hypocrite. Number three, you don't know if he's secretly lusting after those of you that are writing him. And if he's asking you to send a video, do you have any idea what he's doing with those videos? You don't know, and neither do I. But it doesn't look right. So if you want to talk about avoiding the parents of evil, I have never asked a girl to send me a video of herself. <clears throat> never. True story. All that stuff is underhanded, gossipy, uh, riptide stuff. That's not biblical. That's not even a biblical approach to, to dealing with a real problem. I'm an open, honest guy. Confront me head on. Don't make a video diatribe laced with, overlaced with, or pictures overlaced over it from my site when you're telling everybody at Pacific had a porn site. I did not have a porn site. <clears throat> I had a Tumblr site with pornographic images on it and other things. But... To do what he did was silly, ridiculous, and I am going to continue. The reason I'm banging on this drum is because he's beating, and I'm going to beat on it every so often till he goes away. Not his channel, but he needs to just stop it. You've made your point you don't like me. You've made your point you don't agree with my doctrine. 
you've made your point that I'm not as godly as you think you are. And I'm, you're wrong on that one. And you're, you're wrong in your understanding of biblical hermeneutics, theology, and exegesis. I'm not going to get into I know more of the Bible than you do. But I do know one thing. You're erroneous in your view that one can lose their salvation. I have the word of God on that. I have the very words of Jesus Christ on that. I and my Father are one. All that the Father has given me will come to me. No man will pluck them out of my hand. Thank you very much. Jesus himself said we're eternally secure. If you've got a problem with my teaching, you've got a problem with the word of God, and you've got a problem with God himself. That's why you're so angry. Legalists are angry people. Legalists are angry when they're rebuffed and snubbed by us for not joining their little club and bowing at their feet. I'm sorry. I don't want people bowing at the feet of Pacific. I am nobody's guru. I had a guy trying to suck off my breast years ago. Analogy, analogy. And one day I told him on the phone, it's time for you to stop sucking at my nipple and it's time for you to get into the word of God. He got angry and slammed the phone down and he called me a day later and said, you know, I got offended at you, but yeah, I've been feeding off your breast. I understand now what you're saying. I said, you've arrived at a point that you have the tools that you can start reading this and discerning yourself. I gave you the foundations. I've discipled you. Now you need to take the baton and grab it and become a man. He thanked me for that. I don't want people eating out of Pacific's hand. That makes me a cult leader. That makes me a megalomaniac. That makes me a fine piece or a Jim Jones or, a, you know, all these TV personalities. That's not it. I'm a man with feet of clay and I make mistakes and I sin and I say things I shouldn't. And I'm, I'm me. Take it for what it's worth. Take the good you get out of it. Use your filter. Don't be just like me. Don't model everything I model. You be the person God's called you to be. You check whether these things are so. Form your own opinions. Look at your own life experiences and walk. I'm not here to start a cult club. No, it's not about my ego. It's about directing people towards the truth. It's about directing people to think for themselves. It's about connecting with people who have seen enough of this degradating, stupid culture we live in and saying, wow, I'm glad somebody else is saying this. That's what it's about. And for all the little just pond scum out there that wants to sit there and put me down because I comment on the speeding, because it hasn't been talked about. Americans don't seem to feel convicted about breaking the law. They don't think it matters. Well, gee, they don't think a lot of things matter, like a human life in a woman's womb. That marriage is between a man and a woman, not Adam and Steve. That a lot of Christians don't think it matters that a guy is slandering me and still coming after me and attacking, attacking every day. And I start to wonder, you know, is this guy going to cross a line and try to do something stupid? Where's the church on that? That's why I continue my channel. That's why I say the things I say that we need to look at the whole picture of Christian living, not just the one you're not guilty of. And I nailed it and I'm watching it play out. I don't struggle with lust. I don't do that stuff. And he's a bad boy. But they ignore all this other stuff. I will still struggle with lust. It will always be there. You have your thing. Everybody has their thing. Time to get ready for work, folks. This is Pacific. These are my views. I base my views on the following criteria. My experiences, my opinions, and the Word of God. Somebody will find fault with that. When I talk about theology that is not based on my opinion, I base that on what I understand Scripture to say. When I talk about my experiences, experiences don't lie. My ears and my eyes Pay attention to what I'm saying. My ears and my eyes don't lie to me. Just seeing if you're paying attention. My eyes and my ears. That's right. I flipped it around on purpose. Just because you don't have the experiences I have doesn't mean that my experiences are invalidated or there must be something wrong with me. I've had 49 years. I think I can say I know women pretty dang well. And a lot of other things too. And people that have a problem with me talking about speeding, that it's a sin, it is. The Bible says, submit to the governing authorities. And I've also said something else, that if you don't believe speeding is wrong, 
then how come when a cop car shows up, you suddenly go to the speed limit? That's proof that you're guilty because your own consciousness, uh-oh, cop. Wait a minute. I thought you thought it was okay to go five over. You're a hypocrite, dude. And that's what I call out in our culture. Please understand that when somebody tells me I don't have a right to speak because I'm a bus driver, what is that person doing for a living who's saying that? One, they're not even driving a school bus, and I can guarantee you they're not in a position higher than what I'm doing. In fact, if they even have a job at all, they don't have any right to speak. You know why? Since if a man provides not for his own family, he's worse than an infidel. Well, I'm not married. If you can't even provide for yourself and you're living on the system or sponging off mom, you're a lazy person. You don't have a right to say anything to me. Go get a job. Have some self-respect and go get a job and be productive and you'll feel better about yourself and you'll be less focusing on your war against Pacific and go find other fish to fry. That is more telling of you and less about me. I mean, this stuff is just silly, ridiculous. <laughs> Fixations and inconsistencies are showing up all over the place. And it all started with me posting a site. It's becoming quite humorous now to watch people hang themselves and run around in their underpants and not seeing it. So I thought people need a little help in me shedding the light on what really is because some people still aren't getting it. You need to wake up, church. You need to wake up people and you need to wake up Christians. I saw the same dynamic of play, I play on a chat room and unfortunately it hit me yesterday. My channels become like a chat room. I become a dominant personality that a lot of people flock under. And I've been in chat rooms where there were dominant people that other people wouldn't say anything against them, but they would privately message me and say, oh, I don't like this guy. I said, tell him. Oh, no, I'm afraid I don't want to get booted. I say, get on Yazak and you can't be booted and go and hammer him. I'm watching the same thing happen on YouTube. Everybody tells me, oh, I like your videos. I like your videos. And then they run over to this other site, and I like their videos too. <laughs> He's right. Pacific's losing his mind. The internet is really revealing a neurosis about people that's disgusting. I've always called on my people to be bold to stand up for the truth. But you need to start with confronting the person involved and stop playing little girl games and going to other people's sites saying he's losing it, Mr. Kersey. That's not manliness at all. That's childish crap. I'm going to call that stuff out. It's my channel. I'll cry if I want to. And if you don't like it and you don't like me, unsubscribe me and go on your way. Or be a man and say, you know, you're right. You confronted me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to get butthurt if you leave. I'm going to praise God if somebody actually comes to their senses and apologizes and says, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. I'm not trying to run people off, but at the same time, if I'm going to sail ship and it's going to get stormy out there, I don't need a bunch of mice crew that are going to hide down in the engine room when there's trouble. And I'm up there on the bridge all by myself going, great, where's my crew? <laughs> forget, forget that. I want to do a shout out to some people. And it's not all inclusive. Beanie Boy, Schultz, Pyramid Head. They've all been there. Faithful Solid. Ivan, dude, quite a few. Sorry, I respect that. And there's been some women, Emily, Sun Angel, my friend in Yugoslavia. And many, many more that I have not mentioned. But you have to laugh when the people who hate me so bad are watching my videos every time. You've got to wonder about their mental sanity. Is it really they're doing this for entertainment? They must be getting something out of it if they keep watching. If I find a TV show boring, I don't watch it again and again and again. I don't care if it's the next installment of Butch Cassidy. If I don't like Butch Cassidy, I ain't going to watch it. Good grief. I'd rather watch my favorite Martian than listen to the stuff going on on my channel by some of these clowns. <laughs> my favorite Martian. Oh, boy. Okay, folks. Let me wrap this up. 
They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. And that love doesn't mean I can't say the things I need to say. By our love doesn't mean that I can't address some people, even the nice ones, and say, mm, I disagree with you. I think you committed a faux pas. I can take it when I've committed a faux pas, but if you can't, I guess you need to go get your diapers rechanged and grow up into some Christian faith a little bit. Pacific is at the helm, and he's on the bridge, and it's Monday morning, and I face another week of who knows what. Sailing into the ocean, not knowing when the storms and the fog will come. U-boats lurk all around, but guess what? I want to say something to my viewers that hate my gods. I'm ready to meet my God, not because I'm perfect, but because I have the righteousness of Christ. And if you people want to usher me into heaven, it'll only happen if God allows it. But I've made some key people aware of things, not just on my YouTube channel, but people in my personal life to keep an eye out for things. That there's some serious mental psychotic people showing up on the internet and who knows what they'll try to do. Am I living in fear? Nope. But all of our eyes are wide open. Just be aware. And I'm going to close with this. For my trolls, i give you a quote out of a Gordon Lightfoot song. Sundown, you'd better take care. If I find you've been creeping around my back stairs. Don't do it. And you know exactly what I mean. That's not a threat. Don't ever come after me with intent to harm me. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not talking about my channel and the BS that goes on here. But I'm watching some of your ways and what you guys are doing. You're escalating. You're fixated. You're heading towards that rage. That will make you find it very easy to want to kill somebody. You're psycho, people. You're psycho. Your internet stalking me, fine peace. Your internet stalking me, gore master. You've got all the fixings and makings of a psychotic, infested individual that is paving the way for your mind to make it very easy to justify killing me. Let me make that clear to my viewers. So if you thumbs up these fools, you're inflating their ego. Stop it. You can agree with points, but be very careful. They are exhibiting psycho, hateful, awful behavior. Remember, a lot of people on the internet are on meds. A lot of them are unstable. A lot of them are unemployed. And those are the people that make the evening news as going off the deep end and killing somebody. Pay attention, viewers. Pay attention, Christian men and women. Pay attention, those of you that lust after somebody. I'm not unaware that you think somebody's attractive when you say, oh, I still love you. Of course you do. Stop thinking with the thing between your legs and start thinking with this. There's some serious stuff going on on the channel, and I need people to step up to the plate and start showing these guys the door and saying, hey, what you're doing is wrong, and we need a collective group of people to stand up to find peace and gore master and say, you are exhibiting psycho behavior. <clears throat> I'm also going to find out where Goremaster lives. I've already got somebody on that one, and we're going to call the police in his town and say, keep an eye on this guy. You think I'm joking? I'm on it. That's my goal. Because you're exhibiting psycho behavior with your fixations. Same is also true of Fine Peace. We're going to find out where Fine Peace lives. I'm going to call the police and say, this guy's on the internet promoting hate speech. And all this, and you just want to be aware that he lives in your town, and you might want to keep an eye on him. Pacific doesn't promote that kind of stuff. Pacific doesn't promote that stuff at all. But I'm getting concerned that some people are getting so fixated that they're about to cross some lines. Some of my viewers have watched some of the things they've been saying and posting, and it's 
it's the kind of stuff that if we didn't live in a politically correct world 40 years ago, they would have been shut down, their computers would have been seized, and they would have been arrested. Fact. Things have changed in this country. They've got more liberal, and they're tolerating a lot of stuff they shouldn't be tolerating. Pacific does not promote the destruction of people and property. Even if I disagree with somebody. I'm going to tell you guys. It would be in your best interest to get off your cake against me. Pull down your disgusting, dirty little page on Encyclopedia Satanica and get a life. But because you've been doing stuff and stuff has been brought to my attention over and over and over by others, I'm going to do whatever I can to let people know about the stuff you guys are doing and say, you know, <clears throat> local authorities need to be keeping an eye on these people. <clears throat> they can also monitor your internet activities by tapping into the servers. And they don't always have to have a subpoena to do that. I've learned a lot in the last few weeks. Because they do it with kids that make threats on schools. They don't have to subpoena nothing. They can get on that internet and they can monitor threats to shoot up or cause problems at schools. And they can go right into the kid's house, arrest the kid, pull his laptop, and start doing a, um, what do you call it, a um, history search and start digging around and find stuff. Pacific is not the kind of a guy that this warrants this kind of an attack. You can disagree with me, you can dislike me, but this stuff is just, it's, it's stepping up to levels that is just ungodly, and it's, it's, it's causing many people to be concerned that both these guys are psychos in the making, and I agree, and I've said it very clear, fine peace, you need to go away, get off my channel and go away, get off Google with your anti-Pacific comments and your hate, because you're drawing attention to yourself, and I'm going to draw attention to yourself with the police as soon as I find out an address of where you live, or at least a town. I'm going to call the police and say, you need to find this guy. Pacific does not encourage violence against anybody. Pacific doesn't stalk people. Pacific doesn't harass people. Ask anybody that knows me. I avoid controversy as much as I can, except when it comes to me speaking on what I hold conviction-wise. But I don't go around looking for trouble. I do not. My neighbors live on either side of me. They don't have problems with me. Most of the neighbors come out and actually talk over the fence to me. The other night, a couple that moved in was talking to me, said, oh, come on over anytime, we'll give you a beer. I don't drink, but thank you. They got a pool back there. I said, well, we got one too. No, people know I'm not a threat to them. In fact, when we had a neighborhood problem, people got together with me and we went to try to find who was shooting off all the fireworks. And no. Even the people who hate me could live next door to me, and I'm no threat to them. The only threat I am to them is because I stand on some truth here. And that's what's getting them all fired up. All you're doing by doing your rants and your web pages and building all this is proving that, obviously, something that I have said has really raised your hackles. You're proving that I'm getting to you. If you want to do a first-class uh, proof that I'm not getting to you, laugh and walk away and go on about your life. You're actually empowering me more and more by your actions that, man, I need to keep on speaking the truth. You're doing the same thing the people did in the chat room. We're going to drive Pacific out of this chat room. I stayed for four years. I'm Irish. You need to learn something. We're stubborn. I'm not going to walk away because you want me out of here. I'll dig my heels in for another four years if that's what it takes. The best and fastest way you can get rid of me, honestly, is two things. One, you quit attacking me and go away. And three, I actually find somebody I fall in love with and get a life and I won't be on the internet anymore. So if you really want to get rid of me, your approach is wrong. You're causing me to dig in my heels. You've declared war. Well, I'll plant my little American flag right here and say, go ahead and take my flag. I dare you. You're going about it the wrong way, Lore Master. 
If you want to get rid of me, go away. And pray that I fall in love with a beautiful woman where I don't have time for this anymore. And then you won't hear me ever again. I've just given you the secret. Try to uh, operate on that. Same with you, fine peace. You want to get rid of me? Pray that God finds me a woman that loves me. You stop attacking me, you go away. But if God wants me to have this channel, he'll put it on my heart to keep doing it. And if you don't like it, then maybe you're fighting against God. And you know what the New Testament says about that. If, if this Jesus is really false, then it will die out by itself. But if we try to take his disciples down, we could be fighting against God. Even the secular authorities were wise in what they were thinking there. If, if, if God is behind my channel and you're fighting and warring and God's in this channel and he doesn't condone everything I do, but that God is using me, well, you're fighting against God. I think I've covered it pretty succinctly today, haven't I? It's Monday. We're off to another bang of a week. It's going to be 100 degrees this week. It's going to be hotter than Hades. And i got a lot of work to do today. Eight hours. My son's coming to work with me tomorrow. And Pacific is going to roast like a turkey out on a spitfire barbecue. This is Pacific signing off. Bye-bye.